Deep sea divers are always investigating the waters, and while they stumble upon many things we've seen before, more and more they're finding things that are odd to say the least. These are the 20 strangest things found by deep sea divers. Number 20. Atlantic Ocean Manganese Nodules now here's a set of words that just seems to be strung together randomly, wouldn't you say? Atlantic Ocean Manganese Nodules. Let's set the scene for you though, because it's actually really interesting. The RV Sone, a German research ship, was several hundred miles east of Barbados when a mesh net meant to capture marine life instead brought up balls of manganese ore that were bigger than softballs. That's definitely not something you'd expect to find at the bottom of the seafloor. In fact, many of the team were surprised because because while balls of ore have been found like this in the world, it's not been within the depths of the ocean. However, there's a twist here. Scientists were wrong, or at least not telling the entire story, because these kinds of ore balls have been found in the ocean before, but typically it's within the Pacific Ocean. The metal lumps, which most often look like pancakes, are formed from layer upon layer of metal ore that slowly crystallizes around a core. So thus, the strange thing here is that the one ones found near Barbados were spherical in shape, and again they were the size of softballs, if not greater. Plus, they were found around 18,000 feet below the sea level. As a result of all these factors, nobody honestly knows where these particular manganese modules came from or why they formed in such a different way than the others that have been discovered. Plus, it also goes to reason that if they could form like spheres or like pancakes, they can become other shapes as well, right? Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. Nobody knows who built these underwater structures, but there are theories. The photos are taken by a deep sea diver while he was snooping around the Bermuda Triangle. He claims that what he found was the lost city of Atlantis. He thinks that these structures were built by ancient Atlanteans. It's an intriguing theory for sure, but not without a challenge. But what do you think? Is there a chance the city of Atlantis is lost no more? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below using the hashtag Hashtag sweet topic. Number 19. Diving Bell Spider. If you've been with us for a long time here at the Fancy Banana, you know that I'm not the biggest fan of spiders. In fact, I'll tell you with a straight face that they absolutely suck, and as a result, I don't really want to talk about them any more than I have to. But in the case of the diving bell spider, it has to be talked about because it's both a unique and horrifying part of the ocean for a reason. You see, the diving bell spider is one that's an air-breathing spider, and yet it's the only spider in the world that lives entirely under water. But that shouldn't be possible, right? Because it breathes air, and you can't breathe air through the water. That's where the name of this spider comes into play, because it has the ability to create an air bubble around it, like a diving bell, that will create a pocket of air for it to breathe. A very clever trick, wouldn't you say? But that too leaves many questions. Mainly, a diving bell or an air bubble should have limits in how much air it can contain before being within would have to surface, right? Well, at first, that's what many thought about this spider, but now we all know that the bubble that's around the spider is actually actually one that acts like a gill. So, much like a fish, it extracts what it needs from the water in order to breathe. The only time that it needs to go to the surface is for a quick dash in order to get a quick resupply of air, but they only need to do that about once a day. One can only wonder how this spider was able to evolve to do such a feat. Number 18. Spider Crab Army this is the universe punishing us for saying that spiders suck now, isn't it? Because we went from talking about spiders to talking about spider crabs. But thankfully, the spider crab species is not as evil as spiders are, but they can absolutely make an impression if you're viewing them at the right time. Just ask the BBC if you don't believe me, because when they were filming their documentary series Blue Planet 2, they were able to get a shot of a literal army of spider crabs emerging from the depths of the ocean in order to protect themselves from predators.
Now just to be clear, I'm talking like hundreds of thousands of crabs, according to the camera crew. Then, the cameras were also able to see them shedding their shells in unison. It was quite the sight, and if you're curious, the spider crab species get rid of their shells at key points in their lives so that they can make even bigger ones. They need only a few days to grow them back, but they stick together so that it's harder to get one of them while they're all so vulnerable. That being said, there are some creatures that aren't afraid to take advantage of the situation. For example, the film crew were able to catch a stingray coming down and taking some of the crabs. The crabs did try to fight it off, but it wasn't exactly something they could handle. It just goes to show you that strength in numbers isn't enough at times, and even an army can fall in the face of a foe that is much better than them. Number 17. Loki's Castle Deep beneath the Atlantic Ocean between Greenland and Norway back in 2016, scientists found microorganisms that they called a missing link connecting the simple cells that first populated Earth to the complex cellular life that emerged roughly 2 billion years ago. They called this microbe Loki, and as you can imagine, it got a lot of people talking. They were actually found in part of a frozen seabed that was near a hydrothermal vent, and you would think that these would be places that life wouldn't even try to survive in, but guess what? Life does find a way. And seriously, life finds a way to live in those vents and around them despite the inhospitable conditions that other creatures of the deep would have trouble with. By their own admission, the team that found the Loki were just hoping to get some new clues between the original cells that formed life on the planet and those that evolved from it. But they apparently got a whole lot more than they bargained for in terms of spectacular data. Now, there's obviously still a lot to learn about the origins of life, even if the Loki are the missing link, but you can see once more how the ocean is so important to everything on this planet. Because even if the land doesn't contain the answers that we seek, perhaps the ocean does. Number 16. Antikythera Mechanism one of the things that often amazes people of the world is the simple fact that the ancient civilizations, much like the ancient Romans, Egyptians, Chinese, Japanese, and Greeks, were far more advanced than they arguably should have been, including having access to tools and technologies that would frazzle even some of our most technological achievements in the modern day. A great example of this is the Antikythera mechanism. This was a version of an ancient computer, as some like to say, and it's still very much a mystery to this day. The device would be found on a shipwreck back in 1901, and for over 120 years now, scientists have been trying to figure out how the Greeks not only constructed it, but how they knew to make it work like it did. In case you don't know, the Antikythera mechanism was allegedly used by Greek sailors in order to help understand solar movements and know about eclipses and predict other astronomical events. Which is great, and something they would have definitely liked to have, but how exactly did they know how to do all of that and turn it into an analog computer. That's what people have the most trouble with and have been trying to figure out for years. It didn't help though that only a third of the mechanism survived when it was found, but many are trying to recreate it now so they can learn more about it. In fact, arguably the first complete model of the Antikythera mechanism was said to have been recreated as of last year. Though obviously there's still some debate going on about that one. All in all though, the fact that this device exists in the first place is enough to get people wondering about what else the ancient civilizations made for themselves back in the day. Number 15. Underwater Crop Circles if there's one thing in the world that'll definitely get people talking, it's seeing indents in things that shouldn't be there and clearly don't have a human origin. One of these events is obviously that of crop circles, which have been widely tied to aliens over the years. But what if I told you that there were underwater crop circles as well? In 1995, divers noticed a beautiful strange circular pattern on the seafloor off Japan, and soon after, more circles were discovered nearby. These weren't the last time that they were discovered either, and the more these underwater crop circles appeared, the more that people wondered what in the world was going on. In fact, it was over a decade since the first underwater crop circles were discovered that the answer finally emerged about what was making them, or more accurately, who was making them. As it would turn out to the shock of many, the culprit 
was a male pufferfish. Yeah, it's not what you were expecting, and you're not alone in that. In fact, it wasn't just a pufferfish, it was a newly discovered species of pufferfish that had a very unique mating ritual. That's right, the males would try to attract females by making these art designs on the sea floor. Males laboriously flap their fins as they swim along the sea floor, resulting in disrupted sediment and amazing circular patterns. The really cool thing here is that the species of pufferfish itself is only like 5 inches long, but when the end result of its art is completed, it spans a diameter of 7 feet. That's a whole lot of work and effort put into making a mating ritual. But indeed, if the female enjoys the art, they will mate, and I wish that all those male pufferfish have the best of luck. Number 14. Ice Fingers of Doom so I gave you a rather heartwarming and endearing story about life in the ocean. Now let's counter that with the cold chill of death. No, really, things are about to get cold in here, so bundle up. The phenomenon that I'm talking about right now is that of brinicles, which are known as icy fingers that form in cold water areas like the Antarctic. Now technically, this has been known about since the 1960s, but it wasn't until much later that they were not only caught on camera, but seen growing in real time, and it's definitely worthy of the horror movie feeling that the video is trying to convey. A brinicle is formed when the floating sea ice cracks and leaks out the saline water solution into the open ocean below. Since the brine is heavier than the water around it, it sinks down towards the ocean floor while freezing the relatively fresh water it comes into contact with. The further down it goes, the more the fingers branch out and form. Oh, and any creature that gets caught in the way of the brinicles? Well, they simply get frozen in place and die. Number 13. Saruga Bay Creature you might think that at this point in time, with all of our creative powers and technology, that we'd know every fish that lives in the sea and ocean, but you'd be very wrong. To prove this, in 2021, a new fish would be discovered in Japan's waters, known as the Suruga Bay creature to some. The fish is thought to be an apex predator in the ecosystem of Suruga Bay, and it's also documented at present to be about 3 feet long which is a pretty big fish indeed, so much so that the team affectionately gave it the nickname of Yokozuna, a sumo wrestler's highest rank and ultimate goal, as they felt that it was the biggest of their line of fish. The Suruga Bay depths are actually one of the biggest mystery spots of the entire ocean, as nobody really knows everything that lives down there due to how deep it is. Back in 2016, an attempt would be made to catch some fish in the bay, and four new species of fish would be found. So as you can see, while we do know much about the ocean and its depths, there are still things that need to be found and researched. Number 12. Galame Neri's Base Jumping we're going to make this very clear right from the start. The man that I'm about to talk about, Galame Neri, is a professional diver, and thus this stunt is not to be attempted unless you're on his skill level. In the Bahamas, there's an entity known as Dean's Blue Hole. It's a sinkhole that the ocean filled up, and it's 202 feet deep. This makes it a perfect place for divers, both in terms of those who wear gear to get down to the hole, and those like this man who decided that gear wasn't necessary at all. These free Divers are ones who literally dive into the deepest of waters with nothing but a single breath and take many risks while they're diving down. For this particular one, he's going to go into the blue hole and then base jump down it, eventually coming back up. The footage that was recorded is really breathtaking, I'll give them that, but you also know that this man had to have the utmost confidence in order to even attempt something like this. All it would have taken was one thing to go wrong and he would have been absolutely dead. Number 11. The Lancet Fish There are times when you look at a creature and go, yeah, that thing's pretty freaky. And the lancet fish is definitely one of those that fits the moniker to a T. If you just look at its head, you'll see as much horror as you could ever desire via that open mouth and its mighty fangs. It's pointed back, and that doesn't help things either. Darcy. 
If you really want to deep dive into what they are, they're actually 7 feet long, which makes them a very fierce predator when you put that size with that mouth. And equally as interesting though, is that these are a rare type of fish that actually have both male and female reproductive organs within them at the same time. Scientists aren't actually sure how reproduction happens, but clearly it does as we keep finding these fish. They're creatures that don't mind eating even when they're not hungry, they'll rip something apart for meat and then worry about digesting it later. Finally, and equally as horrifying, they're also cannibals. That's right, they'll eat their own kind and not even bat an eyelash. Now you should be freaked out by these things, and if you're not, what's wrong with you? Number 10. Octopus Nursery now, I'm not sure that the Beatles had this in mind when they sang about their octopus garden, but this is definitely something that would be worthy of a song. You see, while mapping out California's Monterey Bay, scientists most definitely came across something that they never expected. Over 1,000 octopuses laying in an area getting ready to give birth to their offspring. While there had been collections of octopuses found over the years in groups, it had never been on this level, and the video of the event is breathtaking to say the least. There were about three rivers flowing into this one, the three rivers of octopuses, one crew member would say, and you can see the lines of octopuses snaking up this formation of volcanic rock. Clearly, we still have a lot more to learn about certain sea creatures in the oceans. Number 9. Gumboot Chaton now you might not know about the gumboot chiton, but you should take note of them now because they are a very unique creature, even if it doesn't look like they're actually alive. Chitons have a mantle, a muscular foot for locomotion, and a radula for eating. Their radula, or rasping tongue, is made up of many teeth-like structures that are capped with magnetite, an element with enough magnetic power to pick up these chitons with a magnet. which is something you definitely should try if you were to ever find one. In fact, the gumboot chiton is one of many that are harvested and eaten in certain countries. They're even seen as a delicacy by some. Now I'm fine with not eating it though. It's not really my cup of tea. Number 8. Devil Scorpion Fish can I just note that this is a very menacing name for a fish? I mean, if you think about it, it's called the Devil Scorpion, as in, you know, devil and scorpion, but it's a fish. As if the fish part is meant to ignore the first two words that came before it. That's not really how things work. Also known as the False Stonefish, this is a very tricky bottom-dwelling creature of the ocean. They're known for lying at the bottom of a seabed and blending into the environment so that when their prey passes above them, they can sting them with their poisonous spine. Yes, like the stonefish, they have a very poisonous appendages that they're not afraid to use. But thankfully, you yourself likely won't have to come across them. But then again, if they were nearby when you swam, you likely wouldn't even notice anyway. Number 7. Marine Flatworm now here's one that's going to surprise you as well as terrify you. I'm talking uh, to you now about the marine flatworm. Yes, there are worms that live in the waters of the world, and you should be very, very scared of them. Firstly, because they're known to be large depending on their species, but secondly, they can be very aggressive and aren't afraid to show off their power in order to get prey. The case in point, in this video, you're going to find a marine flatworm going and taking on a crab, and the worm is going to win. Notice how it uses its large body to cover up the crab until the crab is put down. When people saw this video, they were needless to say surprised because they didn't think a worm could actually do that, but they can, and it's horrifying. Number 6. The Silfra Crack now, I wouldn't be lying by telling you that the Silfra Crack is one of the most important things in the ocean, mainly because it's a rift between the continental plates that's getting bigger every single year. You may recall that there are several tectonic plates that help make up the Earth.
Well, they're not exactly fused together as you would think, and thus things like the Silfra Cracker borne by those plates can becoming separate. While it's bad in the overall, at the present time it's not causing much damage. Due to that, the crack is actually a place that people like to dive into because there's life down there. The Silfra Crack is located in Iceland if you wanted to go and see the unique spot for yourself. Number 5. Underwater River to hear about a river is not mysterious at all, but when that river is one that is actually underwater, well, then that becomes another story. These submarine channels were almost completely unknown until the 1980s, when sonar mapping of the seafloor began to reveal them. Many extend out into the ocean from the mouths of major rivers like the Amazon and the Congo, following torturous routes across the thick sediment on the seafloor. They behave just like you would expect a river to do, including having banks or carving out certain rock faces. A canyon in California was actually made because of an underwater river. There are even underwater rivers in places like Mexico that are actually toxic to go into because of the various chemicals that are in its flow. All in all, we still have to learn a whole lot more about the waters of our world, and that includes the states that some of them take within the waters themselves. Number 4. Apollo 11 Engines now, honestly, finding an engine in the ocean isn't all that horrifying. The real horrifying part is who actually found them. You see, when a spaceship takes off, there are parts of it that break away upon liftoff so that other phases of the craft can begin. Well, that means that those parts are falling down, and that can be bad. So NASA and other agencies do their best to launch over the ocean to ensure that people don't get hurt as the parts fly off. When the legendary Apollo 11 mission took off, its engines were the parts that fell into the ocean, amongst other things of course. The problem was that NASA couldn't find them after the successful mission, so they remained in the ocean until 2013. And guess who found them? Jeff Bezos. That's right, the guy who uh, runs Amazon and all that crap. He made it happen, and now the engines are not only verified as the original engines, but they're on display in a museum. Number 3. Giant Ice Boulders If I'm being honest, ice is something to fear when in the right condition. You don't want ice on the road as you drive, you don't want it on the sidewalk when you walk, and who here actually likes hail? That stuff hurt. But you wouldn't need to fear, say, something like a giant ice boulder, right? You already know the answer to that question. Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lake in Michigan was the location where these entities would be discovered. They were apparently the size of beach balls when they were found. The park ranger, Amy Lipscomb, said that the boulders were formed when chunks of ice broke away from large sheets of ice on the lake, and over time, more layers of ice are added to the chunks, and that makes them grow in size. It's very impressive, but it's also something I wouldn't want to get hit with. Number 2. San Jose Allow me now to tell you the story of the San Jose, a tale that might be horrifying to you if your family was originally from Spain a couple hundred years back. You see, the ship was part of the Spanish fleet that was sent to the west in order to get valuables for the crown and the war that it was fighting at the time. But many of the ships, like the San Jose, sank into the depths and then lost a lot of treasure in the process. But how much treasure? Well, the ship sunk in 1708, and when it was found in 2015, it was found to have about $17 billion worth of treasure on board. Billion with a B. That's enough to make your jaw drop, isn't it? Number 1. 13,000 Year Old Skull Finding the remains of humans can oftentimes be a scary experience, but for this particular skull that dates back over 13,000 years, it became a very important discovery. It was found in a Mexican cave and was believed to belong to a teenager of the time. 
The reason for its importance, though, isn't just its age, but the fact that it was one of the oldest and most intact skulls that was ever found in the Western Hemisphere. That's important because you need intact items like body parts in order to learn from them. The skull could also help to answer questions about the origins of life in the Western Hemisphere as a whole. And that's all from the depths of the ocean and the very curious things that have been discovered down there. Which of these discoveries do you personally label as the most interesting of the bunch? And do you feel that there are still some unique and or horrifying things to be found down in the depths? Will we ever explore the entirety of its waters? Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.